What's the truth about people who die without Jesus Christ? Every single person. They go to hell. They burn in hell. For, forever. For eternity. This is why Jesus is important, people. So, yeah. My favorite musicians have died. Two of my favorite musicians have died now. Alan Holdsworth, Chick Corea. Some of my favorite musicians. Were they saved? I don't know. I'm not going to say they weren't, but I'm not going to say they were. I never heard them talk about Jesus. I actually met a man who knew Alan Holdsworth, who was not saved, who never preached to Alan the gospel. And I asked him, why didn't he ever preach to Alan the gospel? And I know why. It's because he believed that you have to endure the end to be saved. That's what he believed. He didn't believe that the gospel was enough. Most people, anybody who they truly care about and love who has, who has died without faith in the gospel, without Jesus Christ, they will inevitably, almost inevitably, reject the gospel because they don't want to even believe that the person they love so much will be burning in hell in a place where they basically should never have been born. It would have been better off for them if they'd never been born. It doesn't matter how many people love that person. If they end up in hell, it's like they should never have even been born. It doesn't matter who you are. That's why Jesus is the great equalizer. It's so funny. Imagine, imagine if a rich person loses all their money and they're homeless on the street next to the same people that they ignored. Imagine that. And they're both going to die and face God. It can happen, people. I'm telling you. We live in a crazy world, a world that doesn't make any sense. And people just keep going with it because to question it would put yourself on the line. Then people will come out of the woodworks and say how bad of a person you are, how stupid you are, because you believe differently and you're willing to stand up against the grain of this retarded, stupid world that's evil and disenfranchising people, that's greedy, that is wicked, that's uncompassionate, that's willing to step on their fellow man for their own profit. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See, this is why anybody speaking against this is your enemy. You're gonna say anything. You're gonna lie and say anything. The worst thing. And you're gonna say it. And there's gonna be more than just you saying it. It'll be another person after that and another person. Each one will have their own meticulously crafted evil thing that they concocted in their mind to say about you because you stood against the the way that this world is you actually spoke the truth and that's what made you their enemy this is why you became the enemy and that they targeted you because you stood for the truth you actually cared about what was righteous and what was true and what was a true way versus a false way see this is what makes you the enemy if you're the type of person who stands for the truth why did they hate you there's no real reason it's because of how wicked they are it says and this is the condemnation the light has come into the world and that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Again, the more I speak about the Bible, the more I quote the Bible, the more I memorize the Bible, the more people will say bad, evil things about me, trying to damage my testimony, trying to show the whole world how terrible of a witness I am, even though I'm trying my very best. I get how it works. It's, it's all this paradox. It, we're living in, in the most insane, evil age of all time. Wake up, people.